Engineers at the Oklahoma Department of Transportation say new cracks have been located that may delay the opening of the recently closed bridge connecting Lexington and Purcell. But at meetings in the two cities, officials assured residents that contractors expect to meet their repair deadline and open the bridge on time. Crews are on the scene and repairs are underway to fix a vital link between the central Oklahoma towns of Lexington and Purcell. The James C. Nance Bridge normally carries over 9,000 people a day across the Canadian River, but the discovery of cracks in the steel structure closed it down on New Year's Eve, turning a trip between the towns from a three-minute drive to a 45-minute detour. On February 7th, Governor Mary Fallon toured the site and declared a state of emergency. It is critical that we get this bridge back open as soon as possible. The governor's emergency declaration allows the Department of Transportation to fast track the letting of contracts and to speed up the construction process. Now, repairs that would have taken a year will be finished in four months. That's good news to people who use the bridge every day. Uh, we, are, we have an interdependency that is really being sorely tried right now because people can't spend the three minutes going back and, cross the, and forth across the bridge. So business is being lost over here, business is being lost over there. And even more importantly, the inconvenience to the citizens is just tremendous. You know, you've gone from a five minute commute to a 45 minute commute. And no matter what you do to try to alleviate that, it's still 40 minutes worth of time each way that the citizens are losing. I've got a garage door service company, and yeah, if I get a call over to Lexington, it's, uh, you know, about an hour just by the time you get here and get over to there versus a little trip across the bridge, so to speak, yeah. I do know it has affected a lot of people in our community. Um, there's families who don't live here, but their kids go to school here, and so they bring them, and so they have to take that long way around. Five days after the emergency declaration, the Department of Transportation received plans from engineers who inspected the bridge. Two days later, contractors submitted their bids for repair. Manhattan Road and Bridge Construction was awarded the contract on their bid of $11 million. So for every hour the bridge opens early, the contractor will gain $2,500, which adds up to about $60,000 a day. And that's for only passenger cars and pedestrians. Of course, we'll be reevaluating it close to the 45-day period and see what kind of tonnage we're talking about. However, to give you an idea, unfortunately, emergency vehicles, school buses, um, mail trucks, all of those are in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 tons, and that will not still be, um, they will still not be able to go over the bridge after the 45 days, but the overall bridge uh, reconstruction should be complete in 120 days. And for that, it's say $1,500 an hour, which is about $36,000 a day incentive to finish early. The problem started in 2012 when routine welding was performed to repair cracks in the beams. But the steel on the bridge is manganese, a very strong and very rare type of steel. It's the only manganese bridge in the state and one of just a few like it in the U.S. The welding is not conducive to this type of alloy unless it's in highly um, controlled circumstances which would be in a lab for example not in the field and that's what caused a lot of these cracks to appear so therefore we got very concerned and shut it down immediately. So once that happened and once the cracks appeared there wasn't any really any other choice they had I think because we didn't want the bridge to fall down with people on it. There's 264 locations where they will have to uh, repair and reconstruct and some of these areas take about 40 to 60 bolts each. Once they're at this point, there's not a lot that the state can do except continue on their, their path of getting it repaired. But I'm a little unhappy with the uh, banner that was plastered on the exit at exit 95 out here, which indicates to people coming down the road that that entire exit is closed. Because that is keeping people from coming into town that had nothing to do had no intention of crossing the bridge. 
The bridge will open to passenger cars and pedestrians on or before the end of March, and trucks 10 tons and over will be able to cross in mid-June. Until then, the two towns usually so close will seem very far apart.